one, two, and the three. Ichinisan. All right, so we're live. Hi, guys. Welcome to VR Essentials, your go-to place for all the practical uses of virtual reality. Today, a very exciting video because we're going to be doing the unboxing of the Pico Neo 3. I've had it for a week in the box, but I've been so busy with other things, I haven't had a chance to actually unbox it yet. So very exciting to be sharing this moment with you guys. And also today is a multi-layered video because as you know, I don't edit videos anymore. So it will be a recording of another recording in another recording. So this is a recording. Welcome to the channel if you're new and a huge welcome back to our awesome subscribers and regular viewers. Really appreciate you coming back to the channel as well. So let me just do the first part right now. All right, here we go. We have the big box. And I'm going to be changing to various different cameras. So I'm looking, okay, I have a screwdriver. So I guess I'll use this to do my unboxing. So here's the box. I'll do this part here and then the rest I will show you some nice edited footage. Let's just see what looks like in the box first. Timestamps in the description below, of course. Whoa. All right, so we do it properly, right? All right, so first things first. Oh, I have a nice little card here. Uh, well, let me just make sure. Okay, let, here's the card. There we go. Don't know if you guys can read. Hello, Lazius. Enjoy. Enjoy the brand new Pico Neo 3 Pro. Oh, okay, cool. So we have the Pro. Let me just click on the thing here. Okay, there we go. So we actually have the Pro, the Neo 3 Pro. Oh, that is very, very cool. Very happy about that. So that means we have foveate rendering or eye tracking. I'm going to go and check this out. Uh, looking forward to your coverage. Thanks, Frenzy. Oh, thank you very much, Frenzy. Uh, and also to the Pico team, of course, uh, for your help for sending this to us. Uh, we had some issues with UPS. That's another story for another video someday. Um, but really appreciate your help, guys, for sending this to us and for coordinating everything. And you guys are super, super, super awesome. Uh, and we're going to do a whole bunch of different videos. So the first thing is it's nicely packed in bubble wrap. So. Oh, it doesn't pop. I thought it would pop. Never mind, doesn't it doesn't pop. Okay, maybe this one. Whoa, so much bubble wrap. Woohoo, I can start a factory. I can send the bubble wrap uh, out. Can it does it pop? Oh, it pops a bit. I used to love doing this when I was a kid, just trampling on. So we have the box here. There we go. And uh, I'm gonna transition over to another video. Let me just slide it. So we have the slider and then we have this on the box. Let me just click with my mouse so it focuses properly. There we go, like so. And then, ooh, let me just uh, reveal this with you. Hopefully it doesn't fall out of the box. There we go, guys. Here it is in its Glory with awesome lighting, which really, really does it. Great justice. So let me pop over to the other camera. Let me uh, get the other camera so I can show you everything in its detail. And stay until the end of the video because we're going to be doing a comparison of the Pico Neo 2, if you're interested in that. Um, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Make sure you enable the bell because we're going to be doing a special uh, power turn on. We're not going to do the power turn on today. It will be a separate video. And uh, I'll also do separate videos to show you how to install the software. And I'm going to create a new playlist. So make sure you do hit the subscribe if you're someone interested in Pico Neo or you have a Pico Neo 3 but you're having problems with it or you have questions about it. We're going to do FAQ videos with a whole playlist with 10 to 20 different videos. So guys, do make sure you hit the bell, subscribe, bell notification, and subscribe uh, so you don't you know miss all those kind of videos. All right, so. Let me cut and uh, let me go to, to show you some nice footage with the camera there. Ooh. All right, so now this is the other recording. Um, so the first thing is, uh, let me just cut to all the videos 
that I was doing. So let me transition over again. And then I went to film. Let me just make sure that there's no sound. There we go, because we don't need the sound. Um, so I went to film, you know, trying to get some shots for you to show you the product uh, close up and, you know, just make sure everything looks professional and all these kind of things. Um, so before I, I, I start, I do want to mention that, you know, this, uh, the Pico Neo 3 is available in uh, globally. So in China, it's, it's more for the consumer purpose. However, for the uh, Europe market and the US market, they focus more on the enterprise market. Um, so there's various different reasons as to why you may want to opt for something like this versus other VR headsets. Uh, I will do other videos also comparing it to the Vive, uh, Vi the Vive Focus 3. Um, and also the Oculus Quest 2, even though uh, the Meta Quest 2, sorry, is uh, uh, going to be unveiling another headset next year. Um, but there's a variety of reasons why you don't want to use a Meta Quest. Uh, first of all, will be privacy. I will also talk about this in a separate video because I actually ByteDance now own uh, Pico. And there are certain things that they do to protect user data. Uh, some people say that the data can be shared with the China government. Uh, well, apparently the data is not actually stored in China, just to let you know. Uh, it's stored in the US uh, with a backup in Singapore. So they don't share any data with the China government, just so that you know. And if uh, they do, then it would not, I would assume, I will get a confirmation, but I would assume it would not be, um, you know, if one day, let's say, they have any issues with the China government, then of course Pico would have to leave China However, they it would not mean they would leave the US or uh, Europe for that matter, because China and the rest of the world are two separate entities and everything. Uh, I have personal experience in this because I built a platform in China uh, as well as Europe. And you have to separate the data in two. The servers are broken in two. Nothing is actually merged into one server, just so you know. So everything is completely split in half. So if you were to purchase this outside of China, you will not be uh, you will not be uh, exposed to any uh, China regulation, just so that you know. So actually, compare this to Facebook or Meta, your data is in much better hands. Uh, than Meta or Facebook. So this is the first point. Uh, so I will go through some of the points and detail some of the things. Timestamps in below uh, the description as well. Uh, so let's go through what you get when you open the box first and I will provide you more information as we go along. So here, uh, this is just to show you that basically the strap is made out of uh, PU rubber kind of uh, kind of material is actually very, very strong uh, and very flexible as well. So, um, you know, and then at the top of the headset, so this part here, basically, this is where you would put a special cable, which is additional, uh, which uh, is going to be sent to me separately. So I will receive this uh, in, in, I don't know, a week or two, maybe. So basically, it will enable you to plug in the headset into a PC and get 4K at 90 frames per second of uh, display resolution when plug in here. This is your power button. This is the cable I would imagine I will have to try for the charger or maybe the charger goes here. Maybe here is a slot to add in additional, um, additional um, uh, like a USB thumb drive for additional storage, sorry, excuse me. And then here, this is the fan here that basically uh, will cool, the heat will come out of and will cool the headset. So the headset is white, as you can tell, uh, on the front. And then let me go to the other, because uh, we don't, I can scrap this. Then the second video is the front of the headset. So on the front, uh, half of it is black. So you have the camera. So here I'm showing the camera. So you have four cameras. This is inside out tracking. So for those who are not familiar with the term inside out tracking, it basically means that uh, you don't need to use, um, you, you don't need any base station. So base station technology um, basically means you put the base stations around in your room and you won't lose tracking at the back. So if you put your, your hand at the back of your 
headset with base stations because the base stations uh, you have two or four it, it depends on the number of base stations you want to put in your room but um, basically they will be put at certain angles where you don't lose any tracking so it is possible with the Pico the same thing with the Quest and basically every other headset that doesn't use base station technology you will lose some tracking when you put uh, your hands at the back of your uh, your head however Pico did opt out for um, for uh, a different kind of tracking technology this time with the Pico Neo 2 which is this one here this is the Pico Neo 2 it uses uh, electromagnetic technology which is actually very good tracking technology uh, however with uh, Quest 2 and also the new Pico Neo 3 they've opted for wireless um, infrared technology which basically means you would be able to use your Pico Neo 3 using an IR illuminator uh, in complete darkness and I will be trying this out uh, in a future video so this will be very interesting to compare the wireless because the wireless uh, technology uh, sorry the uh, electromagnetic technology you cannot use an IR an ultra uh, infrared light uh, basically uh, with the electromagnetic technology but you can do that with the uh, wireless infrared uh, technology so let me just go back transition over uh, to the video here and then uh, also I show you so that's the camera here then also so this is where you would plug in your uh, headphone jack now I like the fact that uh, you can have a, a, a headphone jack let me just check the sound is still working yes okay uh, so Okay, let me just transition over. All right, sorry, we're live, guys. There's no editing in these videos. Um, so I like the fact you can plug in a, a headphone jack because a lot of other VR headsets, you can't do that, and it's quite uh, cumbersome. Um, okay, for some reason... Okay, there we go. So, yeah, so you can plug in a 3.5 mm headphone jack, and then here, basically, this is to adjust the uh, volume of your VR headset so it's done underneath the headset itself and then at the back um, you have let me just scroll oh okay so in the front uh, at the back yes so this is the knob to actually adjust the VR headset itself so to make it closer towards you to, to make it smaller or to enlarge the uh, you know the headset and then I just want to add that the battery is actually here as well. It's on the back of the headset. Now, if we compare it to the uh, previous model, let me just transition over again. Here we go. In the previous model, uh, you're also able to charge at the back as well here. And also in the previous model, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, this is where you would adjust you have the adjuster here of the, uh, the strap as well. So there was two ways to adjust it and they scrapped it in the new model. So if I just show you, if I just transition over, I just noticed that just now. Uh, so you can just, uh, you just notice here that on the strap, there's no such things. Uh, so it's done differently now. And then the batteries at the back. So economically, uh, it is lighter. And by the way, guys, uh, if I just transition over to this video here uh, so sorry not this one here it's actually it actually weighs 679 grams just so you know uh, so it is uh, typically well it, it is heavier than you know uh, Oculus Quest 2 weight is 532 grams or 503 grams um, let me just double check because last time okay so the quest one was 571 grams and the quest two is 532 grams including uh, you know everything on it so so yeah, so it is heavier than uh, than the Quest. However, because uh, economically speaking, it is uh, the battery is at the back. It feels lighter 
on your head. But I just thought I'd, you know, I'd put it there. Uh, I wouldn't put the Pico on your head for more than, you know, I mean, the battery only will last anyway uh, two, three hours if I'm not wrong. Uh, let me just double, double, double confirm that. So Pico Neo 3 battery life. It is three hours and is 5,300 uh, milliamps, just so you know. So let me just go here. So 620 grams. Without the head strap, it's 395 grams, but of course you need a head strap. And it is three hours of battery life. Okay, here we go, here it is. So this is the official, uh, this is a VR compare, so you can compare various different things and they put all the specs of all the various different VR headsets. So it is also Wi-Fi 6, just so you know, and uh, enabled and also Bluetooth 5.1, enabled with integrated stereo speakers. All right, and then the rest, uh, we'll talk about this in just a moment. So let's talk about the Facebook, uh, sorry, uh, the Pico Neo 3 uh, gasket. So the the faceplate of the gasket is plastic, just so you know. Uh, my only issue with the gasket uh, is the fact that it doesn't support, um, it, it doesn't support magnetic technology similar to the HP Reverb G2. Uh, let me just show you. So basically with the HP Reverb G2, the way that you would take out uh, the gasket is you just you just put it out, that's it, done. And then you just, to put it back on, just make sure it's in this, and then you're done. It's magnetic technology. So this is, I think, uh, something that Pico, you know, could have, to be honest, uh, done. You know, I, I think it's something that on the Pico Neo 4, you know, they're probably making already the Pico Neo 4, and I, I highly recommend them to, to implement magnetic technology. It's, I don't think it's going to cost them so... Uh, I can't speculate on cost, but I'm just saying it's something they need to do because uh, these little plastic things uh, might break, and if they break, then how am I going to get a new gasket? Uh, there's no way for me to call a third party. I would have to call Pico directly uh, to send me one. So... Um, also, is it possible for Pico, because this is for enterprise level things, so I found an, an, an enterprise, maybe Pico may want to supply an additional gasket, maybe, just in case, um, you know, something like that. I, th I think that would be recommendable uh, to do. Uh, it is very stretchable, uh, the plastic, um, and then, you know, but it is plastic on, on the front side. If we go to the uh, back side, so I filmed everything in sequence. Uh, on the back side, it is PU. Uh, okay, so this was sorry. Let me let me just go back because I think I marked number four and five uh, wrongly. Let me just see if I. Mm, yes, here we go. Okay, so on the other side, it is PU leather, uh, which is great. Now this means that it's very COVID uh, friendly. Um, you know, I like the fact that. Compared to other VR headsets, which use a different kind of padding, which is more like a cotton, uh, you know, whatever padding that they use, Pico use a pure leather, which means it's extremely easy. Um, you know, it's it's very easy to clean, very easy to clean, which means it's very friendly for trade shows. Uh, if you're using the Pico in a film set, um, or you're using at a company and you want to pass it on different people excuse me, then you can just wipe it with, uh, you know, uh, an antiseptic cloth or with your Dettol or whatever. It's it's very clean. So I, I like I like that a lot. I think that's very, very friendly. And I do encourage other VR manufacturers to, to do the exact same thing uh, for that matter. And then it also has a uh, instructions uh, on the VR headset itself uh, to tell you, you know, very briefly, uh, let me just go here, there we go. Uh, to tell you very briefly, uh, you know, what's what, uh, how to use it very quickly. So at least for people who, you know, have issues, 
There you go. Uh, we'll talk about the glasses. I'll do a little test at the end of this video. So do make sure that you keep watching until the end and do make sure that you subscribe and reshare this video on all your social media guys so we do get uh, more subscribers to subscribe to the channel. Guys, we're almost at 10,000 subscribers. And then here, let's do the reveal of the actual lenses. I don't know if it's on this segment or not, but here I show you what it looks like. Oh, and this is when I remove it. So removing it uh, is more or less quite easy. You just have to, you know, do a little bit of a... There you go. So this is what it looks like. Uh, let me just show you. This is what it looks like when you don't have this padding on. Okay, so you do have the plastic. This is made of plastic. Uh, and then the outer casing is also made of plastic, just so you know. All right, let's do the reveal, the reveal together which is number six. No, number six is the rubber, okay. So when you squeeze, when I squeeze it, it's PU leather, not rubber, sorry, PU leather, and there's no smell whatsoever. Uh, it's completely smellless, odorless, sorry, um, which, which to me gives me a lot of uh, confidence because I don't like face, uh, Facebook Quest when I used to buy the Quest, I remember buying the Quest 1, it stank for three days of chemicals. I didn't like that. I had to leave the VR headset out. Um, the HP Reverb G2 had a little smell, but it wasn't apparent. It was fine. Uh, but the, the Pico Neo has absolutely no smell whatsoever. Uh, so here's a close-up of what it looks like with the gasket off. And let's reveal the lenses. There you go crisp and clear. So the lenses are Fresno lenses, which means that there might be some blurring on the sides because the shape of the lenses will be kind of round, a little bit like a VR 360 camera, I imagine. Uh, so I'll have to see in you know the next video. Do make sure you hit the subscribe on Enable Bell as I will be doing another video uh, you know, about the lenses as well. Uh, and I'd also like to know if the lenses don't lose too much color on the sides because you can see some aberrational color adjustment on the Pico Neo 2, which basically means that uh, you will see some red and blue and sometimes green color uh, spillover on the pixels uh, when you look on the side of the Pico Neo 2. So I will do a comparison a video with the Pico Neo 2 versus the Pico Neo 3 and the HP Reverb G2 as well. All right, so let me go to the IPD adjustment. So this is something that to me is a little bit annoying, I have to admit. Um, I don't like setting the IPD here. So this is where you set the IPD. Uh, the IPD will be adjusted just like the Oculus Quest 2 and the uh, Vive Flow, if I'm not wrong, here. So there's three, three adjustment, three adjustment. Now, when you remove the uh, gasket, it's easier to adjust, just so you know. And I will show you why. Here, it's clearly three adjustments from one to three. It's very clear. And let me just go to the other video to show you the specs of the IPD adjustment. Let me just take this off and go here. So for the IPD, uh, it's between 58 mm, 63.5, and 69 mm. So the IPD is basically the adjustment of your eyes uh, between the nose and the other eye, or the two eyes, I can't remember. But basically our eyes, uh, let me just transition over, our eyes are not are not built the same way, right? So between the between here to here is not the same. And the distance between here and here is not the same. And the distance between here, this here and here is not the same also. So we all have different eyes. So basically the IPD will rectify this so that your uh, eyesight or your eyes or whatever, sorry, I'm not an expert. Um, so I'm not going to try and explain it as clear as possible because I'm not an expert. But basically it's about how the eyes are, are put together, biologically speaking. On your face, everyone is different, everyone's unique. So uh, this IPD adjustment will adjust 
those different settings so that your experience in VR will be as clear, as sharp as possible. Now on the I, on the Neo 2, there were no uh, IPD adjustments. It was all done in a way that was basically to cover everybody, right? But at least the Neo 3 has some form of IPD adjustment. Again, on the HP Reverb G2, it is a slider on below the headset. Okay, it's a slider below the headset and it covers everything. This is the way to go, guys. Why are you going inside? Why? This is the way to go, guys. Honestly, I don't know why VR headset manufacturers are going for the inside because it is really not friendly. You know, you have an uh, uh, amazing way to... Um, <laughs> this headset is so friendly for doing things like, for example, trade shows and all this. But then suddenly you have this thing that is inside. So if I'm at a trade show, that means I have to adjust, take the headset off, adjust, put it back on. I can't, it's it's not the way to go. So I think Pico, again, for Neo 4, this is definitely something I would look at. Um, I understand that factories are doing some kind of plates and molds for various other people and you know all the factories are going all the hundred manufacturers are going to the same factory and getting it made uh you know and it might help on the costing but i'm just saying that some of these things will actually help more and to benefit the consumer which means that the consumer will be more um warm to buy a headset because it is more convenient for them to do certain things than going to a manufacturer that is doing the same thing for Quest and other VR, VR headset manufacturers and you know just to save a few bulb here and there um, I think at the end of the day it's what the consumer thinks is more important that will drive more sales uh, than than uh, going to to a manufacturer who's done it on other uh, you know other VR headsets. So that's just my two cents worth. But I believe that for Pico Neo three, uh, three uh, Pico Neo four, um, you know, drop drop the thing inside, and uh, you know, put it underneath. Put a slider. Put an adjuster underneath. Not there is my recommendation to you. And I will show you why exactly. Also, in fact, I can show you why now. Because when I put the uh, when I put the gasket back on. By the way, it wasn't easy to put back on. Uh, as you can see, I'm using two hands, both hands. So I know that first you you clack it inside the bottom, but you see it came out again. And I was trying to clack it on the side. And I clack it on the front. So it wasn't as easy as the HP Reverb G2. Let's just put it that way. I'm not, it, it's not, it wasn't cumbersome. It wasn't like annoying. But I'm just saying that, um, uh, you know, here, here, here is why. When I was trying to adjust the IPD here, I had trouble knowing what setting I was on. I didn't know if I was on number three, number two, or number f number one. So that's the first thing. And sometimes when I was trying to adjust it on number three, it wouldn't go all the way. So this is because I think the gasket was in the way. So uh, definitely, definitely wasn't as smooth to adjust the IPD compared to when the gasket was off the headset. So this is why I'm saying Pico, I think Pico, if you're watching this video, I highly recommend that you uh, you 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 just put a switch underneath uh, you know for your Pico Neo 4. It's just just my two cents worth. Uh, but at the end of the day it's it's up to you guys what you do. Um, okay so let's go to next Alright, so more buttons. So this is the other buttons on the side of the headset. So this basically will help you to go back to the main menu uh, or to navigate through the menu if, for example, uh, you don't want to use the controllers uh, for whatever purpose. Um, you know, oh, you want to put your your um, your VR headset, your Pico Neo 3 on standby, then you can do that as well. So this basically acts as menu, uh, you know, controls and also you can also uh, specific apps can make use of these buttons so you can actually use these to navigate through specific apps as well without having to use the controller so this is um, you know pretty pretty handy to have um, you know on a VR headset that other VR headsets don't have uh, now guys if you're looking to sell your Pico Neo 3 in the future or something I recommend just leaving the plastic there but you can remove it if you want and then on the other side 
Uh, there are no buttons, just the Pico logo. I'm wondering if they're going to add the ByteDance logo on the Pico Neo 4, because of course ByteDance came over after the Pico Neo 3 was already made. So that's going to be something very interesting to know. And whether the next Pico will be called the Pico Neo 4 or the ByteDance VR headset, who knows? Uh, these are questions that I'd love to know in the future. So inside the box, there's also another box here. As you can tell, I'm grabbing it out the, the box there. And this is basically where you have your uh, instruction booklet. So, you know, uh, nothing fancy there, but all the instructions as to what you want to know. Uh, sorry, I was flicking fast there. Uh, how the controllers work and all this kind of stuff. And then also, uh, this is where you have your charger is inside that box so there's nothing in the plastic box there again it's a big box for little content i think in terms of packaging uh you know perhaps you want you want to save space in the future no need to have such a big box for small content there i think um and then so this is where you have the charger to charge the headset i guess it would take maybe between half an hour to an hour to charge it i will do a separate video so again uh, do make sure you hit the subscribe and enable bell uh, as I will be doing testing. And then this is the um, things to put on the controller so that basically the wrist protection uh, so your controllers don't go flying out of your uh, hands. All right, and the next video is the actual controllers. So here we go. Controllers. Do make sure you watch until the end of the video, guys, because I'm going to be talking about other things in this video and timestamps below as well, as I mentioned before. So the buttons, uh, now compared to the Quest 1, I can't compare to the touch controllers Quest 2 since I never bought a Quest 2. Um, they're more or less the same, uh, but they are nicer than the HP Reverb G2 controllers, guys. Uh, I have to say this and, and do watch until the end of the uh, the video because I will compare uh, the controllers. They don't make too much noise when you're clicking, which is good. Uh, I think this will help, uh, you know, content creators. And apparently the batteries, now you do have to put two batteries, which they have opted out of the, now I don't know why they've done this. Again, this is probably because of the manufacturing plant maybe, but in the Pico Neo 2, Here's the controller. The Pico Neo 2 has a USB-C that you plug in to recharge. You don't need batteries. Uh, why did they opt out the batteries? I really don't know. Batteries are not healthy for the planet, right? Um, and these could be sent back to Pico. They could recycle these, use the parts for whatever or whatever, right? You could send this back to Pico. I'm pretty sure you could. Um, so I'm not quite sure why they decided to opt out of the whole charge USB. I was really happy to have this, to be honest. I didn't have to think about batteries and this and that. Uh, or maybe it could be because, uh, okay, maybe if you're at a trade show and your batteries ran out, that could be the reason why. That's the only reason I could think of. If you ran out of batteries in here, you're screwed, right? You don't have batteries. Um, so then you could change, you can change, which makes sense to me. I get it. I, it does make sense. I'm just saying it's a shame. I, I really like this. It was, I really like this. It, it was something that I was looking forward to, uh, to talk about on the video. Uh, but there you go. Uh, that's gone. So now you do have to use uh, two batteries uh, with the Pico Neo 3. Uh, and, and the weight of the batteries of the, of the controllers are not too bad. And removing the bat the the casing is very straightforward. Um, it doesn't actually. It's very easy to remove the. You know, let me let me get the other video with the uh, other controller. Here we go. So you have the triggers there, and they don't make much noise. I, I do like the fact that the, the controllers don't make a lot of noise because compared to the HP Reverb G2, let, let's do this right now. Let me show you the comparison of the HP Reverb G2. Let me just transition over. Here we go. And then let me get the uh, Pico Neo 3. Here we go. So they are, okay, let me, in terms of weight, I do need to remove this. So there's no, um, let me remove, remove the memo grips. Okay, 
There we go. So no memo grips. First of all, they are much lighter than the HP Reverb G2. I can tell you that right away. Um, even though they're bigger, let's see, I will do a separate video, guys. So do hit the enable bell after you subscribe. They're much lighter. The ring obviously is smaller, uh, but they use different technology in terms of the tracking, and I will do separate videos on that as well. Um, but the weight here on this part, this part here, is much lighter. Now, HP use AA batteries as well. Same. But I can't feel the weight of the batteries. Because it's not the batteries that are weighing a lot. It's whatever is put in here. If I take the batteries out, Oh, they're lighter now. Now they're lighter. Let me take the batteries out of here and do a quick test. So I'm swapping the batteries from one controller to the other. It's a little vib vibration there. They turn on automatically. And then let me put the batteries from the Pico into the reverb controller. There you go. Now, it's not the batteries, it's definitely the uh, ergonomics or the way it's been designed. The HP uh, Reverb G2 controllers are definitely... Uh, I'll, I'll rechange the batteries later. <laughs> they're, they're definitely uh, heavier than the um, this. And then the other thing I wanted to, to, note, to tell you about is the clicking sound. Okay, so here, here's a comparison with the HP. And here's the trigger of the uh, Pico. So you can definitely hear the, the noise more. And then also with the uh, this one here. Definitely much quieter. And then the AB buttons with the reverb. Definitely hear it more on here, and then the A button on the reverb. Pico. Reverb. Pico. So the Pico, uh, the Pico's controller sound is definitely uh, much less obvious than the HP Reverb G2, which for me as a content creator is something that really helps me because the mic doesn't pick up the clicking sound, which is it. it it's a little bit annoying, to be honest with you. It is annoying. However, uh, I will need to test out the microphone of the um, Pico Neo 3 because there was an issue with the Pico Neo 2. Um, the Pico Neo 2 microphone could pick up everything six, uh, 30 meters away, like all the way down to the cars uh, on the road, and I'm living on further up than the 11th floor of my building. So, you know, I'm hoping that the Pico Neo 3 uh, will not have, they've improved the microphone as well and won't pick up so loudly everything around. Uh, this is also something I'll be testing out. Uh, and there were also, also some issues with the speaking uh, when you were talking and you were streaming from the Pico Neo 2 to the PC without the cable, uh, then it would play back in my ears what I was, what I was saying, which is, echoing into my ears what I'm saying. So uh, again, I hope that this has been fixed in the Pico Neo 3 uh, compared to the Pico Neo 2. Um, so le let me just show you very quickly on the camera the difference in design. So you can tell the design, the two uh, cameras that were here on the Pico Neo 2 are gone and they're now on the sides of the headset as I showed you before. The grill looks to be the same. But the Pico Neo 3 is heavier. Wow. Wow, the Pico Neo 3 is definitely heavier than the Pico Neo 2. That's very interesting. It definitely feels heavier, guys. Definitely feel he definitely feels heavier. Uh, let me just bring this in because maybe... Okay, there we go. To the max. No, it definitely feels definitely feels heavier, for sure. It is for sure heavier. 
Um, I don't know by how much. I don't have a scale. Uh, let me just go to, let me just transition over. Okay, there we go. Pico Neo 2 weight. So the weight was 692 grams for the Pico Neo 2. But it's supposed to be lighter for the Pico Neo 3. Ah. Hmm. Okay. That's very interesting. Uh, maybe the... I don't know. Maybe the... It just... It just feels heavier to me. That's all. It, it feels heavier. I'm, look, I'm not, I'm not a scale. All right. I'm not an electronic scale. I'm just giving you my feeling. My feeling is that it is heavier, but perhaps on a scale it's not. Uh, maybe it's just the, the, the weight distribution. Maybe in total it's not heavier, but the distribution of the weight on the front feels heavier than the Pico Neo 2. Uh, that, is, that is the first thing. I will do a separate video you know, showing you the differences. I think in terms of the design inside of the headset itself, let me just transition uh, over once more because I forgot to do that. Yeah, the design inside is different. Uh, let me see if I can put this light here, remove this, there we go, and show you quickly. So inside, inside it does look different also. Uh, the rings around the actual headset have been uh, embossed. So basically it was flat before. This is the Pico Neo 2. This is the Pico Neo 3. So it was definitely flat before. And then now, as you can see, there's a uh, an emboss or, or a bezel, whatever you want to call it. So to remove the rings, if I just remove this very quickly, Ah, okay. So now you can't remove the rings anymore. Okay. Okay, you can't remove the rings. So the rings now inside here, you can't remove. But with the Pico Neo 2, if I just show you quickly, this is the Pico Neo 2. So inside the Pico Neo 2, you were able. If you had a, a problem or you wanted to put some, uh, you know, if you wanted to put some, some protection on your lenses, for example. Okay, well, never mind. It used to be easy to remove it, maybe because I haven't removed it in a while. But uh, basically the, the side is plastic. This thing here is plastic. I can't remove it. Never mind. Yeah, I can't remove it. Uh, I could remove it before, but never mind. So this ring could come off so that you could put, uh, for example, lens protection or something like that and then put it back on. Um, but now with the Pico Neo 3, it's no longer possible to do that. So everything is built in. So if I wanted to put a lens protection on it, for example, like you do on your iPhone or your Android phone, um, then I would have to cut it in a way that, you know, basically it means I would have to fit exactly the lenses uh, this time and I can't just take this off, put it on and then cut it on the outside instead. All right, so that's that. So uh, let me just uh, transition over once more and uh, show you some other things that I think would be very insightful for you to know, especially if you're an enterprise uh, level and you're looking for a cool headset to purchase. Uh, the first thing is that the strap is much more well built for sure. Uh, this is the Quest Tube uh, strap. There be so many. There's been so many controversy about this strap snapping all the time. The strap for the actual Pico is much better built, for sure. Uh, the other thing is that to drag and drop your files, according to Hugh, all you have to do uh, with the uh, with the Pico, apparently, and I will test this, so I will do a separate video about this as well, is all you have to do is to drag and drop your files into the Pico's fi file system. Um, now, I don't have the cable, so I'm not quite sure how I'm going to be able to do this. Um, maybe there's a way to do it without, without the cable. I'm not quite sure. I will do some testing. Otherwise, I would assume you would need the cable. Or, oh, you could use a USB-C, sorry, to plug into the headset. Uh, so you could also do it that way. Um, but otherwise, you just drag and drop and boom, done. 
you don't have to switch off the headset. Everything is in there. You don't have to take off the headset, uh, unlock the headset and blah, 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 and do all these different steps like you do with the Quest, which is very cumbersome. I really didn't like doing that with the, the Facebook uh, Meta Quest, uh, Oculus Quest uh, headset at all. Um, so this is very convenient. Just drag and drop, boom, your files will be in there. So that is very, very neat indeed. Uh, and then the other thing is the maximum resolution where you're not gonna get any drops in frame whatsoever if you're doing any VR 180 or VR 360 content is 8K, guys. Can you believe it? 8K, if you use an 8K camera at 60 frames per second, you will not get a drop in frames using the Pico Neo 3. So that is absolutely amazing that the Pico can actually handle this and also by the way um you know it is using an xr2 chip which is used on other vr headsets for example uh the uh htc vive focus uh, 3 and the htc vive focus 3 because it has a dual uh air cooling system it has a super duped up air cool system compared to the uh, pico neo 3 um basically means that the XR2 chip could actually be bumped even further, so it is possible that Pico may, in a software update, software update later, boost the XR2 chip's capabilities, enabling you to upload even higher resolution files inside of the Pico Neo 3 without having any issues or cooling issues of any or heating issues of any kind. So that is pretty damn cool. Um, I would say it is also, by the way, guys. Open VR, Open XR enabled, and you can it can handle uh, more than 24 naming files, which is much more than its competitors uh, when it comes to files that you know you want to use inside of your uh, you know Pico Neo 3 to make it work. So do go and check out. Uh, I'll post a link below with all these various different things uh, that you can go and check out in terms of the naming conventions that you can use that are compatible with the Pico Neo. Three and then finally, the price uh, of the Pico Neo 3 is 699 US dollars. Uh, let me just go and confirm this also on the Pico uh, website. So, Pico Neo 3 pricing. There we go. So, go to Road VRs. Um, so uh, the Pico Neo 3 uh, is 699 US dollars. Now that is not the pro version, if I'm not wrong. And the pro version, which is the one that they sent me, uh, which has eye tracking technology in it, um, is more than that, is 899 US dollars respectively. Uh, in China, there's uh, 390, 420 and 470 uh, but they don't offer the same kind of stuff. So uh, I will ask Pico for clarification on this and leave some messages uh, below in the pinned comments uh, when I you know, have the, the, the details from them. Uh, my apologies, I should have known this, uh, this part before shooting the video, but because I'm doing this live, uh, it's very hard for me to edit any content whatsoever and uh, redo the actual video itself. Self. So in terms of the lenses, uh, we're looking at 3,664 times uh, 1920 resolution at PPI 773 uh, up to 90 hertz refresh rate. Um, so that's that. Um, however, when the Pico Neo 3 or the Pico Neo 3 Pro I um, is slated to tethered PC via the NVIDIA's Direct Mode, which lets DisplayPort supported headsets, it provides 4K, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, at 90 hertz refresh rate. So let me go to the Pico Interactive Pico Neo 3 website. There we go. So we're on the official website. So uh, just to, you know, in a nutshell, just to uh, finish this video. So as, as I mentioned before, it is powered by the Qualcomm XR2. It's got six gigabytes worth of internal RAM or eight gigabytes RAM for the Pico uh, Neo 3 Pro i, which they sent me with 256 gigabyte onboard storage and featuring, as I just mentioned just now, 
3,664 um, by 1920 LCD. Oh, it's an LCD screen, by the way, not OLED. So Pico, again, I do recommend you use OLED for your uh, next Pico Neo uh, 4 because it's got crisper uh, OLED or micro OLED would even be better uh, because it'll have sharper pixels, sharper colors, better uh, eyes and all these kind of things. Um, and also say it's 90 hertz. And it is six stealth uh, headset. Uh, it has 98% high fidelity field of view, just so you know, and also uh, wireless PC VR streaming. So you can stream all your VR content from your Steam or other whatever APKs that you may have installed on your PC without the actual cable. And guys, as I mentioned before, do hit the subscribe and enable bell as I will do comparisons with the streaming and without the streaming. Uh, so it has built-in eye tracking, foveated rendering, which I'm going to be very interesting, uh, very interested in testing. And I will do a separate video on this as well. Uh, what other things can I give you that I haven't covered already? Well, he has Bluetooth 5.1, as I mentioned before, 2.4 uh, gigahertz, gigahertz, sorry, and 5 gigahertz, 2.2 uh, MIMO 11AX Wi-Fi 6 support. So I will try to, I don't really understand what this means, to be honest. So I'll try to ask them uh, what this means and get some clarification. Um, oh, and by the way, guys, it also supports uh, NVIDIA Cloud XR, which very, very excited about this, uh, allowing business to integrate VR into the workflows to drive design reviews, virtual uh, production, location-based entertainment, and more. So this is very, very cool. Very cool that it supports uh, NVIDIA Cloud XR um, and OpenXR, as I mentioned before. And then uh, I think that's about it, guys. So, yeah, that's it for the unboxing. I think I've covered quite a lot of information. Do leave a comment below, guys. Let me know what you think. I think the IPD could be, you know, a slider underneath for the Pico Neo 4, as I mentioned before, and also give the, op the uh, option to charge the uh, charge the, the, the controllers US, using USB-C and not put two AA or AAA, I think it's AA batteries uh, in the actual controllers. I think this is something that needs to go moving forward. So yeah, so guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. Do let me know what questions you may have down below. Let me know your suggestions as what you want to know in the Q&A videos. Uh, specifically and then I'll try to cover that as well I do want to thank you for watching today's video guys you guys are super awesome it's a really long video today uh, and I will post it in 24 hours time on Sunday uh, November well it is Sunday in Singapore here November 6th so guys thank you again for your for your support hit the subscribe if you want to know more or you want to order Pico Neo 4 Neo, Neo 3 sorry you know, do let me know, send me an email, I'll be very happy to help you out as well. Uh, but yeah, I'm very excited about the Pico Neo 3. Very, very excited. Guys, what do you think? Actually, you know, it looks pretty cool in my hands. It looks, it's pretty sturdy. Feels good, feels good. Very happy, and again, Pico, thank you so much for sending this to me. Franzi, you are a superstar, you're a superstar, really are. Uh, I'm just opening my my emails. Uh, Franzi, thank you so much from Havana Orange. So Havana, Havana Orange Franzi's colleagues also, thank you for your help. Really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Franzi and Havana Orange, who are the marketing and PR team for Pico. So guys, I shall leave you now. Take it easy. Ciao, guys. Plenty of videos to come. Bye. Ciao.